Good morning, this is episode two from Namibia and we're just leaving Quiver Tree now and we're heading basically straight west to the coast. Um, and I'm excited for that because there's a really cool place called Coleman's Cup, which is an abandoned mine that's been kind of overtaken by sand and it's just a really cool photo location. So that's where we're heading on today's episode. But first, today's video is sponsored by squarespace.com if you're looking for a place to start a travel photography blog or portfolio, Squarespace is a really good spot to start. There's lots of really good blogging tools with a lot of cool features like geotagging, simultaneously posting to your social media, and really clever templates to make portfolios or galleries look really good, really easy. So whether you're looking to sell images or just have a really cool place to show them off, Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and you'll get a little bit of a discount on your first purchase. Just made it to Luderitz and the wind is insane. <laughs> it literally could barely open my door. And we're heading to Coleman's Cop, but on the way we just wanted to do a quick loop around trying to find animals. And there's a bunch of flamingos here, so if I can hold my tripod or my camera in the wind, oh my glasses. <laughs> if I can hold my camera in the wind, I'm gonna try to get a photo. My microphone makes it seem like the wind wasn't nearly knocking me over, but I promise you it was. And these poor flamingos were taking a beating. Pre-Canon R6, I don't think I would have been able to get a photo in this wind. But the in-body stabilization was a godsend. Okay, we made it to Coleman's Cop, but the wind is intense. It's like sandstorm styles. And uh, I don't think I locked the truck. Uh, yeah, it's like sandstorm styles. So it's kind of crazy. But I'm wondering if this wind has maybe chilled out a lot of these footprints you get here in Coleman's Cop. This is one of those places that it actually is not crazy hard to photograph. You just find light. Unlike Quiver Tree the other day, where you really have to study composition, here you kind of study light. And there's lots of really cool images to be had. You just gotta explore. The more I visit this location, the less seriously I photograph it. Instead, I wander. I throw on the lens I think I'll use, and I wander. I explore every room. And here in Coleman's Cop, there are literally dozens of buildings and 50 something rooms to search through. Each of them totally different. Like I mentioned, this is an easy place to photograph in that there's just cool light and cool stuff everywhere. But like Quiver Tree, it is a lesson in composition and trying to figure out how to make it look cool. And there's also the added challenge of footprints everywhere. So we're kind of lucky in that it was really windy so it's cleared up some of the, the footprints, but there's still a lot. I'm trying to do something different than last time because last time I got these really beautiful wide images that I really liked. This time I'm trying to get a little bit more detail oriented, trying to find places like this where there's a door and then another door and you've got multiple colors here. You've got the tracks of the dunes and brown then you've got this, I guess that's like a gray door with a yellow trim and then green behind it and then blue behind that. And I think it's really cool sharing all those colors in one image and it's not anything wide that has a lot of depth to it but it's something more textured and totally different to what I normally do. So I'm having a lot of fun so far. Photos just seem to come to life here in this ghost town, thanks to the light. And don't get me wrong, I really like these images, but as someone who has been here so many times, I'm starting to look for something more unique to the classic looking images. So I keep wandering 
and I keep taking photos. The thing about this location is that so many of the images come to life in Lightroom. It's just better to over photograph it here. So one, this place is awesome and you should come here. Two, if you ever come to shoot here, be extremely careful because it's crumbling. In fact, you can see a hole in the floor here and it's like, yeah, you can really hurt yourself and then right above it, a piece of the roof is coming off. So yeah, you definitely have to be a little bit cautious running around this abandoned town. Exposed beams, broken floors, shattered glass, and exposed wires. This place is a hazard. But with some care, you'll be fine. And it's definitely worth the minor risks for a special place like this. The first time I was here, I really focused a lot on finding sand. And I think that you kind of get caught up in trying to find sand because that's what makes this place special. But I think on this, on this episode, this time visiting here now, this is my fourth time visiting here, I'm really just looking for cool photos. And I found this window in this stairway in this abandoned mansion. And through here, you can kind of create this cool frame with the window frame of one of the other mansions in the backdrop. And it's different from, again, my style usually, but I'm kind of loving it. And I'm kind of loving the fact that I've been here enough times that I'm not trying to shoot the cliche anymore, if you will. Sun stars of abandoned mansions taken over by sand dunes and bathtubs left to rust and look even more retro than they are. What else do you need? so much fun it's like it's just so fun to explore and almost shoot casually I love that about this place I could photograph this place every day and the good news is we get to do that kind of ish at least for two days the Sun's almost down we're coming back here tomorrow morning though so I'm gonna carry this over to tomorrow's shoot Okay, we're back at Coleman's Cop. If it looks like we've broken in, we haven't. We have a special permit for this. Otherwise, you can't come in for sunrise or sunset. The gates are locked. And then the only way you can come in is on uh, when it's open, which is 9 till 1. And there's like guided tours and stuff like that in here. Yeah, so if you don't have a special permit, you can't come in. We have a special permit, which is awesome. Yeah, back at sunrise or just before sunrise, it's funny, the first time I came here, I told the people that I was with, just go explore, find stuff, don't worry about getting great photos, just go explore, and then go back to those spots at sunrise. But I somehow totally just forgot <laughs> that light exists, and what ends up happening is you have sunset there, sunrise there, and because the light's exactly opposite on the buildings, what looked cool for sunset might not look cool for sunrise, and vice versa. So the way you almost have to photograph this place is just stumbling around. You just gotta kinda like explore and see how the light's bouncing around. Okay, so I said um, you kind of got to stumble, but if you know where to stumble, it definitely helps. I stumbled through here last time I was here, and I really, really loved this location. There's just all these doors, these tiny little rooms, and then most of the doors have collapsed and are surrounded by sand. And generally, there's a lot of really bad footprints here. It's one of the most walked areas. But because of the windstorm yesterday, it's cleaned it up a little bit. And it's still not perfect, but it's a really beautiful, I think beautiful shot with the light coming in. Okay. 
Okay, I think I found my favorite photo of the morning. It's pretty simple, but I really like it because you actually have clean dunes. Uh, it's been hard to find clean dunes, but like I said, because of the windstorm yesterday, it's really helped clean up some of these shots. I came here specifically because I knew of that other shot that I just did, but this, I think, even though it's really simple, is cooler. You have the dunes in the bottom of the frame and they're like hard ridges. And then you have the doors in the background with a little bit of light bouncing through on this side, you get nice shadows on the ridges on the dune. And then because it's lit over there, as you can see on my face, you're not having any backlight issues. So this is a beautiful frame. As soon as the morning light popped over the sand dunes and into the windows, the buildings came alive. Not literally, that would be scary, but alive with light, depth, and dimension. In the end, I grabbed this photo, maybe my favorite ever from this epic Namibian ghost town. Okay, I think that uh, I think that worked out. I think actually there's a couple photos in there that I, I quite like. I struggle anytime there's a lot of composition involved so i love coming to places that challenge me compositionally places like here places like quiver tree we were last time and then to a lesser extent sosis flight which is where we're heading next one of my favorite places on earth so beautiful and you don't have to work as hard for composition there it's just one of those places that's just it's just a postcard waiting to happen i'll see you there peace